Howdy, Jake Beer. Today we're looking at Central North Airport Group, ticker symbol OMAB. It's in the transportation infrastructure industry. Looks like they develop, operate, and maintain airports in Mexico. Uh, the company was founded in 1998, headquarters in Mexico City, Mexico. So $4.4 billion market cap, $4.8 billion enterprise value. Currently a 5.4% dividend yield. Not bad, not bad. Uh, if we look at their revenue, about 10 years ago, 263 million, uh, and now 608 million. So pretty, pretty hefty increase there. Return on invested capital, very consistently, well above 10%, likely well above their weighted average cost of capital. So increasing business, pretty, pretty heavy there. Gotta love this margin. Let's see, 50.5% gross margin up to 61.5% in 2022. And then operating margin, 34.5% in 2013, up to 51% in 2022. So love to see increasing margins. That basically tells me, um, you know, they can increase their prices and uh, people are still... People are still buying the business, uh, so that's good. So not a lot of net debt. We saw about 400 million net debt. We see 382 million on their long-term debt, 170 million cash and cash equivalents. Uh, free cash flow, five-year average, maybe 150. That looks like very low capital expenditures for something in like the airport industry that's interesting but very very consistent cash flow and uh payout of 168 million is a huge amount of their cash flow um i mean with as much return invested capital as they have i would really want them to be reinvesting it back in themselves and be getting these super high 15%, 18%, 22%, 23% rates of return uh, on the invested capital. And so right now they're paying it all in a dividend. Uh, looks like they buy back shares a little bit over the last 10 years. Uh, all right. So pretty consistent business though with massive margins humongous margins 50 percent operating margin that is insane so let me start to make some assumptions here i think you know the company might grow uh, what is that average i mean you take out the last two years and you look at 2013 to 2019 let's see 446 over 263 to the power of is that one six nine percent? I mean, I think. Is there any acquisitions? They. Damn. Okay. All right. I mean, I could see this being a five percent growth a year type business. Again, they're handing out a lot of their excess cash flow to in dividends and a little bit through share share buybacks. But I feel like at the end of seven years, there's still going to be growth potential. And if they do decide to invest, they're going to get super high returns on those investments. So I'm going to put about a 15, uh, 16 on the terminal PE and terminal price to free cash flow saying at the end of seven years, there's still going to be a little bit of growth potential there. And again, a little bit of premium based on if they do decide to reinvest in the business, they can invest at 15 to 20%, which is well above the market, well above their weighted average cost of capital. Great to see that. Shared change recently. Not very much. I might just put 0% there. Uh, as for margins, I mean, huge margins. I'll probably go just about with the average here. Let's say 32. I mean, free cash flow has consistently been higher. Got to love to see that. And their margins have been increasing. Maybe let's do 35, 38. And then the dividend. I mean, right now it's a lot of their free cash flow. And if you look at their five-year average, the only year they couldn't have afforded it is 2020. I mean, I'm fine keeping it as is, assuming maybe they'll, over the next seven years, probably average above that $200 million free cash flow 
hopefully upwards of like 300, 350, which would make that payout roughly 50%. I think I'm fine keeping it as is, but again, you really want the company to use their excess free cash flow wisely and sometimes giving it back to the shareholder and dividends, not always the best. And their history of dividends isn't that long. I mean, they, they cut it in 2020, which was safe, but then, I mean, before that they've had it quite a while. So I think I'm comfortable keeping it as is right now. I think the business can definitely afford to increase it. Uh, but for me, given that I want the payout to be, you know, around that 50% for a less growth business for a company that has is growing quite a bit. I'd want it to be well under a 50% payout ratio, but I think I'm fine keeping it where it's at right now with the goal that they'll reinvest the rest at these high rates of return. Uh, we get to a price that needs to fall 35%. Uh, I feel pretty confident, pretty comfortable, not confident necessarily, but comfortable with these initial assumptions. And um, for me right now, I think I'm waiting but personally, to add to your stock list of, uh, you know, your stock screener on the dividend side, I think this is definitely one to look at. Uh, I don't necessarily know how long they've had their dividends for, but it's been at least 10 years with them only taking it away in 2020 for COVID. When things got a little crazy, they probably didn't know where their margins were. Pretty safe bet there. But outside of that one year, they have produced a very solid dividend. And so if you're looking for a company that's going to give you excess cash flow in retirement or wherever you want it, I think this is definitely the company to look at, uh, to put on your screener. For me personally, though, I'm just waiting to do more research uh, before I, um, it's going to have to fall a little bit before I do more research. But I hope, um, you know, you got a, another company because I don't think I've ever heard of this company before I researched it today. Uh, so yeah, just hoping hoping uh, someone got some good use out of it. So thank you and have a good rest of your day.